Okay, so now we're on to the more creative part of our project. Um, as you can see, what we did is uh, we laid down, after we sunk the basin in, we laid down an underlayment. It's called geotextile underlayment, non-woven. This is gonna protect the liner. This is a 45 mil uh, EDM, uh, EDPM liner, rubber. Very, uh, very good thick liner, so we wanna protect it from being pierced by the stones on the underside as well as on the top side. You'll notice I laid some underlayment on top of the liner so that when I, we place these big rocks, we don't pierce the liner. So now we placed our, what we call a feature rock right here. And this is, this is the rock that the whole design is gonna be centered on. So this is gonna be the most dramatic waterfall. It's about a 12 inch drop from here to the bottom of the basin. So we're gonna have this as the, as the final fall for the water feature. So as you can see now, we, I placed it, I've leveled it, so, and you have to kind of trial and error because once the water starts flowing, you don't really know where it's all gonna go. So this is the first time for us. We're gonna figure it out as we go and you can get have the benefit of seeing that. We built a shelf behind this rock right here. This is gonna be the, fir, the upper level pool. So what we've done is we've compacted the dirt underneath the liner. We've leveled the line, the, this area of the, of the, of the waterfall and this is gonna create a pool. And if you can see here, I wrapped, like my, my wonderful wife has suggested, I have, I, have, I have curled up the liner where it, where it meets this rock face because this is a critical joint here. I want the water to pool up to level this rock, so I don't want any major leakage behind that rock. Now we're gonna be sealing it with foam too, but this is an extra protection so that when the water comes here, it won't immediately go down and find a leak. So we've shaped the top of the berm. We pulled the underlayment and the liner back, and now we've shaped it to how we think it, we want it to look. And it's gonna start here with the basin, up here. I saw, sorry, the spillway. Here is a spillway. It's a 12 inch spillway, aquascape. So this is gonna hook into our plumbing here. Um, it, is, it is level and it is a, a slight angle. So uh, that's what we want to do. And we're going to now pull the lining back at the, the water's going to come down this path. It's going to take a turn here. It's going to have another little fall here and it's going to pull into this area right here. We're just about done rocking in the pond. Uh, you can see that most of the big rocks and a lot of the small rocks have been placed. Uh, the spillway has been put in up here. It's all been checked for level. And now the, uh, the whole design we created basically has the water coming off that spillway, which will be hidden coming down this path of these smaller rocks. It'll be a turbulent kind of, you know, white rod water kind of thing. And then it's gonna turn here on this big uh, triangular rock and it's gonna have a small fall here like we've been talking about. It's gonna pool in this area right here where the, you see the fabric filter, the fabric underlayment. And then it's gonna, it's gonna pool and then it's gonna come over this big final rock and do the final dramatic waterfall. So we've been working pretty hard the past couple of days, placing all these rocks. Uh, we still got a lot of rocks uh, left over uh, from the old pond, but I'm sure we're gonna find places for them as well as we continue to rock it in and tweak and adjust it. So right now we're going to, I'm gonna hook up the plumbing to the spillway. I'm gonna show you how to do that on the next episode. So the one detail I wanna, I wanna draw to your attention is you notice that you have the liner here, this 45 mil uh, e EPDM liner, rubber liner. And then you notice that this uh, underlayment on top of it, and you'd ask, well, why do you put it on top? Because it's also underneath it, protecting from any sharp rocks in the ground from piercing the liner. Well, it's the same kind of concept on the top. So what I did was I placed, the, as you see, the underlayment on top of the liner before I placed the rocks because of concern that we would tear the liner, these large rocks would pierce into the liner from the top and, and tear it, which is in leak as well. So it doesn't matter whether it's tearing from the bottom or the top. And you can see we actually already tore the liner in a couple of spots. And here is a good example of what happens when you tear a liner. If you see that right there, I patched it. There's a, there's a patch kit that you can use to patch it. But that was because I placed a large rock there and then I twisted it to try to position it and sure enough I pierced the liner. So it's always good extra protection to put the 
underlayment on top of the liner in the areas where the rocks are big and sharp. And that gives you that extra layer of protection. A little bit more costly, but the underlayment is not that expensive. So just a tip for when you do your, your pond.